The Emperor's wolves will never give up the chase. Hello and welcome back to the channel. It's Puppy Midnight and Space Wolf Boris bringing you a new fresh deck. Yesterday we got hit with a Space Wolf patch. Uh, I hope it's not the only Bellus patch for this uh, month because there's still the problematic legions. But nonetheless, we got a balance update. And what especially struck my eye, the Warlords. We got Bjorn now. Uh, he is not particularly good. I think he's pretty bland. But all the old ones, except Russ, got some pack synergy. And as mentioned, the one that struck my eye is really Gago Felhand. He was like the worst of the bunch. He was just a really bad Loken with a slightly higher health pool. And Berserk, which was just terrible. There was no synergy with the Legion or with the Warlord itself whatsoever. And I've been running him, like yesterday and today, and I'm having a blast with him right now. And I just wanted to share the deck with you I was using. It works like a charm for now, I mean it's the start of the season, but nonetheless I played uh, like uh, 22 games with this build. And I only lost one game, so it uh, seems pretty good to me. Uh, I mean, I like uh, Warlords which get attack buffs by default, it will pay anything. So yeah, a couple other cards also got reworked, but the Warlords really what stands out. We also got Curse of the Wolven, which is uh, almost as well chosen now, but I think it's just fair. We don't need a second one. And uh, the fact that some of the Space Wolf troops have ward and all that, it's uh, pretty nasty if you give it to something. Yeah, okay, let's go over the build. So, as mentioned, our Warlord is Gago Felland. He turned from one of the worst Warlords in the game to a really, really decent one, I think. And the free attack on pack is really nice, so you want to stack your deck with flankers, sneak attackers, and all that stuff. And the ability isn't health bad, you won't use it that much, but it certainly helps if you want to preserve some health. But you will attack most of the time anyway, so this is kind of an aggressive deck. A first of Iron Fenris, a really good card which came to us from the new expansion. A 2 damage and draw a card is a little bit like Ashen Claw, it's going to fix the curve. It's just a very good removal to like attack into something, use Iron Fenris, draw a card. Really nice. And we could call Beer Hunters. They're just good by themselves, 2 energy, 2 3 flankers, not much to say here. If you play them, you can attack to something, Gago gets one attack, and you basically can kill something with 5 health with your face. Really good. These are scouts. These are just really good and cheap pack activators again. Keep some stealth until it's worth it to attack with them. Like, you play them turn 1, attack with Fellhand. Next turn, unless you want to trigger pack with something like, I don't know, Bailey, but you can't play Bailey turn 3, but uh, turn 2, but let's say you play them turn 2 and play Bailey turn 3. Then you obviously attack with them, but I would keep them stealth uh, as long as you can, just so they survive and you can trigger a pack when it's necessary, when it's effective, you know. But yeah, just a really good pack activator. They're also a really good target because of the wolf, and it's better on the status because they really won't get survivor, uh, survivor 1. But 3-5 scouts, turn 2, pretty good, especially because we are very likely to go first. I really like that. Berserk also doesn't matter that much because they sneak attack, so they will attack the edge turn anyway. Very good troop here. The Chilcha Engine, a card you don't see that much, but it helped me out a lot. It is here to fix your curve, so you basically want to fish for something which is on curve, or you want to fish for combo pieces. So for example, we got the Blood Holes Veterans in here, yeah? When the friendly group dies, they get Blood Thirst until the end of turn, which is huge, they can finish the game by themselves. So if you got these guys out, you want to use the Chilcha Engine to fish for something like the Colbert Hunters, or even better, the Goldstone Hunters, because the Goldstone Hunters will die if they attack the enemy's face most of the time. So you suicide these guys, trigger pack, and these guys get Bloodthirst. They attack twice, and you trigger pack two more times, deal 12 damage with them, and the Gago goes up to 5 attack. Uh, really good here, I really like it. Next up, Curse of the Wolven. This card was utter trash, it, it got buffed a bit now, you get Survival 1 as well. Well, it wasn't trash per se, but just not very cost efficient. Again, look at such a chosen, it's 4 energy, so 1 energy more, survival 3 and plus 3 plus 3. Now it's kind of close to it, it's a common, yeah, I know the rarity doesn't play that much of a role. But as mentioned, this is really strong on troops of war, so something like a Jordan Stalker Squad, or Bailey who will heal himself. You attack with these troops anyway each turn, so the Berserk really doesn't matter. Uh, if you put it, of course, in something like Gunnus on added one game, it's fucking insane. It actually surprised me how good it is now. Emperor's Execution, there's not much to say here. L3 energy for damage is really good value. It doesn't cycle, it does anything special. Use this as a finisher most of the time, but uh, you can just clear stuff with it if there's no other means to it. Goldstone Hunters, really good here. You will have troops on the board most of the time anyway. And these guys are just a free pack trigger, free damage. And as mentioned, the best combo here are with the Blood Holes Veterans. 
you got the uh, they didn't get cleared i mean they are six six four so there isn't that much stuff which can deal with them on curve and you follow up with the gold and just slam them into something these guys get blood thirst and uh, muy bien next up in formal network this is already stealth card of choice and as much to say here Jordan's Talk Squad, this is just the best sweet drop for the Space Wolves. Two Tide Trigger Sword, really nice, also not much to say. Wolf Claw, this is the cheap version of Korn's favorite, the spell Space Wolf one. Unfortunately, Gagor got only his attack buff on the next attack. Well, not unfortunately, but kind of fortunately, because it would be busted as fuck. You can get his attack to 5 or 6 pretty easy, and then you play this and he swings in for 14. You can use this for two pack triggers or something. It's not that great because, as mentioned, his attack buff lasts only on one attack, but nonetheless, this is a pretty good card, so one copy still found its place here. Why lie? So, not including this guy into the Space Wolf deck is just not reasonable. It's the best Space Wolf card I'd argue. If you drop this guy on curve and we have a high initiative, and this guy sticks, you most of the time win the game. He is really good, really like him. But right above him is the Curse of the Wolf, man. Just enjoy life, man. Punitive Strike, also another good card we got from the Galaxy in Flames expansion. This puts in play to Cold Bear Hunter, so these guys were for energy. Very fair. A uh, good thing about us is that you get two pack triggers and you can distribute your damage as the want. So it's better than Vorex, kind of. I really love this card, so two copies here. Jurgen, not much to say. He's just a very good 5 drop. I think he's also in every Space Wolf deck just because he's good. He's a 4 5 frontline with Ward, so many enemies will have to attack into him. Might go to out, can't bounce him. Just a really good card overall. Bloodholes Veterans, these are the big hitters of this deck. So, as mentioned, you want to play them and then you want to combo them with something like Goldstone Hunters. But there's also a lot of other stuff which can suicide on your own turn. These Stalker Squads, even if they attack face twice, they die. Uh, the Colby Hunters will die most of the time when they attack something bigger. Punitive Strike, uh, Fenrisian Wolves, even Rangu Veterans also die to a lot of stuff and if it's late game. So, yeah, they work perfectly. Then they swing in for 12. And then you can swing in for 4 attack, yeah, because basically pack trigger twice, or maybe even thrice because you attack with something beforehand before triggering the blood thirst. So, insane card, really love it. Got it, best card of the galaxy, plays the tension for the space wolves. Now you need more cards like these. Unison Spear. I was on the verge to scrap this because it was simply too slow for this deck, but it actually won me one or two games, I think. Uh, it has synergy of visibility to some extent, but when you have this, you kind of want to attack every turn to stun something. But yeah, there's still use for it. It's not as good as with Rust, in my opinion, but nonetheless a good addition. Gunnarsson, uh, just a very good 6 drop, but not just quite as good as Baylai, but if he sticks, it kills off stuff like Petrurabo. He, like for example, Brum Petrurabo can't deal with this at all. You give ward to yourself, he himself has ward, and then something adjacent has ward. Uh, take care of the positioning, like I prefer to put stuff which has ward on the by default, like Jurgen or Baylai, to the left of my wall, or just as a rule of thumb, so to say, and stuff which doesn't have ward to the right. So I have Gunnarsson always went to the right of my wall, so he buffs my wall and something else, some other troop. Just to use him to full effectiveness. And then we get the Varengi Veterans. Uh, 6 energy, 7 5 flank, which is just a huge damage and a potential pack trigger. Really good, I like them. I think Risen Wolves, yeah, we top off with these at 8 energy card. Uh, it's at energy, so I was again on the verge of not including it, but it's just too good to not include it. You put in play Freki and Greg Gary. Uh, I don't know if you can view them in the collection, but that's basically two four fives, yeah, with flank. One of them has plus 1 attack for each damage enemy unit. And the other one stuns on attack, so two really good flankers for it, energy, a uh, really good card here. Alright, that's the deck. This is, as I mentioned, kind of aggro, kind of mid-range. It's an aggressive mid-range deck, so to say, with some little bit of combo potential. Little problems out of the cycle, you're kind of dependent on top decks, this is the biggest problem of the Space Wolves. But we got the Chulch engine here and Iro Fenbus to kind of fix that, more or less. But nonetheless, it functions really well, and as usual, if you don't agree with me on some of my card choices, or if you're missing some of these cards, I got some more cards which uh, you might want to use in the stack. First of all, some Space Wolf cards. We got Ice and Steel, uh, the card card reduced to 1 energy, so it's not too shabby right now. Uh, we got Mesa Scouts, uh, you, we got Ward itself, which is likely to stick. Uh, problem here is we are not likely to have more than 2 troops. Like after those games I played, I noticed that he will never have more than 2 troops on the board most of the time because he has two deciding stuff. Building the board is kind of hard. But you can combo it with punitive strike, so these become like 3 4s. So I was mentioned, Nisa Scout, play something and then buff it up with Sight and Steel. It has its value, but I simply think it doesn't have enough impact to justify putting it in here. A Curse of the Wolf and does a trick as a buff card, it's much more effective. Now, Valdir Seekers, a really good 3 drop, a good target for Curse of the Wolf. 
Thing is, we already have a good three drop in that Stalker squad. Having both of them is always kind of awkward when you have both of them in the starting hand. Yeah, as mentioned, you can buff them with Curse of the Wolf and they have sneak attack. They don't die like the Stalker squad. But the Stalker squad is just better overall, so I decided for the Stalker squad instead of the Falcon Seekers. But they're a good substitute for those. Next up is the Sergeant Kargir. That's uh, Rhythmic's brother without the beard, so he's only a common troop instead of a warlord. Yeah, the thing is, he is uh, just not very good. He is playable in Russ, in my opinion, because you can like heal him after he attacks because you trigger pack again. Uh, but yeah, I don't think he's too great. We got Punitive Strike here, it's just a better option for, for NG flank. If you want some late game, we got El. Oh, Jesus Christ, what the fuck is his name? El Thursa Skrin. Uh, the Dreadnought, so it's an 8 energy troop, but a really good one, it's warded, and it can win games by itself. So if you want some additional end game in this deck, or consider this guy, like, one copy or something. There's the neutral cards, first of all, we got Escape Land. And this is pretty cool on Bailey, obviously, it's good on Stalker Squad, so you can guarantee it being buffed next turn by the Curse of the Wolf or something. Blood Hole Veterans, also a really good target. We kind of have a hand size problem here with this deck, so we got only Iron of Fenris and the Children Engine and Cycle Cards, it's not really additional draw. So we kind of have to be careful with our resources to not run out of cards too soon. And that's why I skipped on this one. Still a cool addition if you want it to be a little bit more risky. Now Vampire Alpha just provides some heals. That's always good. Uh, and Anti-Stun can come in always handy. Next up, Arrow Slider. That's a card you can include in almost every deck in my opinion. It's good because of its versatility and low cost. It always finds its use, so feel free to include it if you want. Then we got Malkiel. Why is it really good here? We got high initiative, so we can play them turn 1. That's the optimal play, of course. And then we can instantly ramp turn 2 into health and Bailey, and that's a winning play. For example, problem is we don't have that much in 4, like our curve tops off at 2 and 3, and then 6. Like, at 4 and 5 energy we mostly combo some stuff with something else, or uh, we clear the board, yeah. So, yeah, he's cool if you got him turn 1 and then can ramp the Bailey. Besides that, I don't think he will find a use here, and we also have no means to protect him, but nonetheless a good addition. Then we get the Felizian 5th Airborne. We don't have that much in the Ferengi spot, so I think they might be good here, because they have stealth. So they are kind of like Nisa's scout, they are very likely to attack next turn, they are very likely to stick because of the stealth. And that's a pack trigger, it's a 5 damage swing, pretty good, you might want to include them. Next up is to cast them. again we have not much to play in the for energy spot, so it might be a really good card, we have high initiative, you can disrupt your opponent with that. But we have no means to protect her, and we kind of want more attacking troops than troops which just sit back and provide a beneficial effect. Nonetheless, a good addition. Fire walkers, uh, these are good because we have like four bloodthirsty troops here, a lot of flankers and ourselves. And I think uh, they're good with buffing those so they provide uh, some additional damage on the butthole veterans or the stalker squad. Not too shabby. Honor of Sparge. Uh, the thing is, we got a pretty stacked uh, six energy spot here, like six six energy cards in the negro deck. It's, uh, that's a bit... That's a bit nasty already, but you gotta do what you gotta do, and this card would be cool because uh, you can play with Ice and Steel if you decide for Ice and Steel, like play Barge, then buff all that stuff with Ice and Steel, and if all that stuff sticks, you get a shit ton of pet triggers from it because all the little dudes attacking and all that, and suicide like something for Blood Holes Veterans, you got the idea, it provides a lot of troops uh, for us to suicide for the Blood Holes Veterans, and it's just free pack triggers for a huge swing with Gagor. So yeah, that's the deck some alternative cards. We're gonna jump into some gameplay now with Gago. It's the start of the season. I really like this guy so far. Only thing I don't really like are the, not the voice lines, but his voice, it's like... The Emperor's fools will never give up the chase. Yeah, I don't know. He doesn't sound like a Fenrisian Berserker, like really badass. He sounds like, I don't know, like my mask teacher or something. Uh, so yeah, let's jump into some games. It's still the third of the season. I'm already in the top 10 by playing him. Just, as you saw, the win rate so far. It's insanely good, but yeah, it's the start of the season, keep that in mind. So, without further ado, let's jump into some games. Rest! Mm. I'm not sure how good it is. I'm gonna mulligan a wolf in here. We don't want that in starting hand because uh, we're not guaranteed to draw a troop, which we can buff with this. Uh, I'm gonna keep the rest, so this is fine. Let's see what he brings. Mm, double Fenris is not that great. Death Pad is also not a very good matchup for us. We got a lot of front lines. Like a card I forgot would be probably uh God damn it, that's a lot of red game. Card I forgot to mention on the alternative card would, would probably be something like Breach or a Fateful Clash. Because yeah, frontline really fucks this up a little bit. 
So there's no point in triggering pack here. I'm just gonna do this. Cycle it. We got a pretty bad hand here, kinda. Oh, Baylight. Yeah, you're one turn late, mate. Bad. Well, let's see what he plays. No, that's fine. I can kill that quite easily. And uh, we can also play the Stalkos. Yeah, let's play the Stalkos. Let's play this. I wanted to use my ability, but here... Uh, we're just gonna do that. It's important control. It's the sir. That's fine. That's not so fine. Okay. No, I still can clear that. So, uh, let's play Baylai. Back into this one. And I offend this again. Jürgen. Alright. So, I think it's Death Card have a very convenient answer to that. They just play uh, Vengeance. If he has it. Yeah, Endurance also does it quick. Not that efficient, but you got rid of him. And that's important. Alrighty. Uh, Blood Hole Veterans. I like that. I can play these next turn on the Colby Hunters. If we got something to kill. Let's see how it goes. Uh, that's okay. So you might want to attack into it, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't matter that much, okay. So, they are not getting bloodthirst, but they are damaged anyway. So I could fish for my uh, both turns now, but yeah, he, he chipped them down already. So let's just play the Colby Hunters. Let's play these guys. Uh, this guy. Do this. Swing in here. Get rid of the front line and give him a smack. Of six damage. They still kind of did their. Oh, did their part. Alright, let's do some mobs here. Um, yeah, this, this, this is poisonous. It kind of sucks. But if I play the wolves, I get two pack triggers. And uh, that's another one. Yeah, that, that's not quite enough. If I play this, that's also not enough. Um, so I'm probably gonna just ignore this. I'm gonna the Chilcher engine into gold stones. I'm gonna play uh, Jurgen. I'm gonna attack with that. And smack here. That, that's that's fine. Um, problem Matic would be... Yeah, not that. Okay, he's done. Uh, Bullmatic would be Mortarian's resolve or something. Yep. The warrior. Pretty good. Right, Master Sir. First game goes to us. Gago takes his first. Call of the day! Pretty good. Off to the next one. A mirror to be expected, but let's see. Yeah, not keeping that in the starting hand. Let's keep the Iron of Fenris, I guess. These are scouted, right? Right, double punitive will help. Doesn't help yet. So let's just use the ability. Um, to chill engine into. Let's get here again. Mm, simply because we can play him next turn.
You did a strike. Okay. That's good for me. That's good for me because I can answer with my own. Um, I need to kill both though. So we're gonna do it this way. And one here. And one here. And kill guy one uh, by myself. Ah, oh, fuck. Okay. Hmm, that was pretty pointless, I think. Yeah, that, that was pointless, because I can just still kill it. Uh, let's play the Blood Hells here, because I have both sense. He might have a Rangis, but whatever. Then I can at least keep my Kunosan around. He has a Varangis. As expected. So let's play Gunasan. We got more Varangis, bro. We're we gonna curse here for Gunasan, that would be pretty good. Yeah. Rip Gunas on. Uh Ormond Network. Yeah, let's do it. There's no other users for the Ormond Network here, so I might as well play it. This is gonna be our finisher more or less, I feel. So you get more flankers, Mr. Panzer say. Okay, okay. So, let's see. Curse on this one. Uh, I might be slightly off. I will see. I'm just gonna do it nonetheless. I might. I still can play the cold stones next time. So, yeah, punitive spike again. Yeah, not quite lethal yet. Should be enough next turn, I think. Yeah. He offed himself. Going first kind of helps in this matchup. But this is a very responsive matchup anyway, so where's the better flank? So, alright. Uh, pretty good. Uh, off to the next one. Hello, this is Hassan. So, appreciate the fire initiative. Let's see how it goes. Pretty good hand, though. I'm actually gonna keep it this way. Because it's uh, just a perfect curve. I am faceless. Yeah, I still Lucretia. Whatever. And not a big difference, am I right? So, scouts. Smack. I am faceless. We have to smack. Anyway, so. I stand ready to fight. There's a raffle. Alright. Good for us. Now let's play the talk squad. And uh, attack here. I am faceless. And smack the last rifle. Uh, here's Lucretia, that could be really cool. The high initiative Lucretia. Mm, that's okay. No. I can heal this, I don't care. Stay alive. One attack here. 
And I misplaced here, but I don't think this survives anymore. And Leo, uh, whatever it's called, the solo Xilia guy. Okay, we got Nurgen, Nurgen, Jurgen next turn. Ah, uh, that's not cool. So with Bela, you want to attack first. Buff one attack and then attack to heal it. You obviously want to keep it at full health. Mm, so Karsten is okay. I'm just gonna play Jürgen. Um... I'm gonna deal more damage to him, actually. This is gonna go down to 4 health, but I don't think it matters that much. Faceless. And kill that. So yeah, we can't play uh, any tactics before we kill that, but... Uh, I'm probably just gonna play troops. I guess Baylight takes the cake here. And third game goes to us as well. That's it when happens if you get a perfect curve, I guess. Even going second. Mm -hmm. oh, come on, it's out of the season. Give me a break. So with these guys. This this fucking Legion always plays this crap. Okay, let's see. It's it's doable, but fucking annoying because last card is still a thing. Alright, let's see. Um Let's get Gunnarsson, I guess. I was hoping for uh, Melee, but that's an achieve. What's the reason behind giving him one extra energy? I don't get it. It's like it's always going first, but having the counterattack with extra plasma. <clears throat> That's better naked for some reason. Okay. Uh, let's play this still. He's gonna kill it, but whatever. Okay. No killer augmentics. And counterattack. Alrighty, um, let's get rid of the last cutter here. And the battle cannon, okay. Something playable? Scouts. That's playable. A rocket pod. And of course, it hits for three twice. It just keeps spamming plasma for. <laughs> Jesus, it's so annoying. He doesn't even think about it, he just does it. But man, whatever. Let's try. Here's another last cutter. What's he gonna do with it? How's Macabius? Why are you equipping this before? How's Macabius? The dumbest shit I've ever seen. Okay, he has no more. Uh... Oh. Good luck, man. Why do you pep them before attacking? Get punished. I mean, it didn't matter, but holy fuck. I hate knights. And always these, this, always these guys spamming them like shit. It's start of the season, come on, man. Take a break. Uh, anyway, guys, this is big for this video. Just a little sneak peek of our new boy, Gay Gore. Gagor, Fellhand, 
So this would be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it despite the uh, <laughs> occasional assault. But yeah, after the week of streaming and 8 hours of content, me being a little bitch, I thought I would use some deck build video again. And yeah, as mentioned, I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, consider subscribing to my channel. Check out the other stuff there. There's more coming up because I still hope this is not the only balance patch we got this season because knights are still a problem. And so is the Raven God mission, yeah. But we will see what happens. Maybe this will be another month for, for cock and ball torture. Hopefully not. We will see. Now the meta report is uh, still not out and should be coming next week sometime. And maybe we'll see another patch in the day. Anyway, hope to see you around in the next video. Midnight out.